Disney braces for a fight over its board. After months of talks, the activist investor Nelson Peltz is jockeying for a director position at the entertainment giant as he pushes for a series of changes. Disney board exposed itself to activist intervention, but Peltz may be overreaching. Disney Pelt Showdown is a throwback to the corporate Raider era. So, hey guys, um, welcome back to the channel. We're talking about Disney and it seems there is a hostile takeover in progress. It's interesting because um, I remember when I was a kid, and for those of you who are my age, I'm pushing 50, you may remember, there was a movie Wall Street and uh, essentially Gordon Gecko. he was that kind of person who'd be like the hedge fund kind of guy and go in and buy up companies and then divide them in the parts and sell them off, that sort of thing. And I guess, you know, this hasn't really happened for a long time, like this kind of big public thing. And I mean, it doesn't get more public than a company like Disney. So I wanna go through some of the stuff. If you're interested in business, I think you'll find this fascinating. And uh, if you just like talking about this stuff, you'll find it fun as well. Um, the first thing is, is uh, I thought it was interesting, is um, uh, over at uh, CNBC, you can look at the headline here. The way they worded it is that Disney board exposed itself to activist intervention and then, but Pelts may be overreaching. I mean, that extra bit of, of, of you know, the way they worded it seems pretty biased actually, um, because who knows if he's overreaching or not. I mean, a headline should just say, this is what's happening, et cetera. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, one of the things that in, in, in uh, Pelts's defense, uh, he's making the claim that um, Disney really overreached by buying Fox. Uh, they bought Pixar, Lucasfilm, uh, and Marvel, if you don't know Lucasfilm, that's basically Star Wars. And um, it's funny because uh, when these things were happening, um, I, I, I should have thought of it like FTX, but in the past, because I used to work in Hollywood, we're always thinking, okay, Disney you know, has a bunch of money, they're just buying everything, they own everything, and everything they touch is gold. But it, it, and the reason why I mentioned the FTX thing, let's like say crypto, when FTX was out basically buying Tom Brady, you know, uh, um, Steph Curry, and, and uh, all the YouTubers, stuff like that, you know, in my mind, I was like, they're spending way too much money on ad spend. And I was like, that's a huge red flag. Disney was a little bit different because it's more acquisitions. But if you think logically, yeah, you know, you shouldn't be buying all this stuff if, if it doesn't end up returning uh, like, like it, you know, like it should. Uh, and so essentially he's just making the claim that they overspend on stuff. And you may be wondering, wow, you know, why does Pelts care about this so much? Well, I'll tell you, uh, I was looking at this here and I guess I, as of late 2022, uh, he had a $900 million stake uh, in Disney. And then, as you guys know, the stock has gone down. So at one point, he probably had well over a billion dollars in this thing. So if you had a billion dollars in something, I'm sure you would care about it as well. Um, now, it was interesting, though. I guess uh, Bloomberg reached out to sources at Disney and said, hey, what do you have to say about this? How are you going to defend themselves? So this is what Disney said. Um, well, this is unofficially, though. I just want to say this is how they're probably going to defend themselves, is a better way to put it. But they're saying um, probably pelts. Uh, you made flaws in your in your math, right? Your calculations are off. You're also making uh, factual statements that are just wrong, right? That's how you're going to disprove his thesis that that you know things need to change, uh, and also too that you don't have a, a particular strategy to solve things. So um, it's actually really interesting that there's a fight for control at Disney. So basically how this thing is gonna work, um, he's gonna file a statement with the SEC, and then basically uh, he's gonna try to convince uh, other shareholders to go along with him in you know, uh, securing a seat, securing voting rights, like like getting, getting things to go in his favor. Because if you don't have enough money to just basically outright buy the company or you know, try to take control of say 51% of the company, you gotta convince a bunch of other people who are also shareholders to go along with what you want. So it's actually really interesting. And um, I think the other thing too is, is you're gonna see a lot of this stuff as we go through a recession, when companies and stocks are going through downturns, you know, people get mad, point a bunch of fingers, et cetera. Their website is all public, right? Everything's public, so this is where it is, restore the magic. Um, the, the thing that they really focus on, and, and I reason why I'm showing this to, is like, if you ever are in this world where you wanna do a hostile takeover, that sort of thing, the, the thing you point to is stock price, right? So if you really wanna get people mad to say, look, the stock price has gone down, things gotta change, right? And if you're a shareholder, um, you, you're on board with that. The other thing that they're talking about as well is if you wanna get people sort of upset and get on, people on your side to say, hey, look, um, they cut their dividend, right? So so you're, you don't get any benefit from just holding the stock. So I think those two things are really interesting and, and not crazy, uh, especially if you want to you know, get people on your side. They're also saying in more particular, uh, we'll go through some of the things they're saying, okay, corporate governance is poor. Uh, failed succession planning, over-the-top compensation, minimal shareholder uh, engagement. So basically they're like, you pay your executives too much, right? Um, you don't know who's gonna replace Chapik. So, Cause remember, as you guys know, they, they went back with Iger again. So like, you don't have like a clear succession. It's kind of like Game of Thrones that we're dealing with here. <laughs> and also too, you're not asking what shareholders think, right? So it's, it's like poor corporate governance. They're also saying, 
Poor strategy and operations. Again, this is from uh, Peltz, um, try and uh, um, this fund. And actually Peltz went to my school. Actually, a lot of people did, but I'm just saying he, he did. Um, but uh, he's also said um, a flawed D to C strategy. So that's a direct to consumer. Um, basically, uh, when the reports came out that Disney streaming wasn't doing so great, um, this brought on a lot of criticism. And part of what was going on is that during the sort of um, pandemic, as you guys know, Netflix was just killing it, right? They, I mean, killing it in a good way. They were making tons of cash and everything that seemed great. And so Netflix really upped their spend uh, on shows. And, and essentially, you know, they had all these like really, really expensive shows. If you watch uh, Stranger Things, that last uh, um, season was like horribly expensive. It was like the most expensive, you know, uh, show of all time, basically. <laughs> and, um, and, and and then you look at like HBO and again, like Game of Thrones, like 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 the... The, um, the, the, the spend on these things kept going up and up and up and up. And so Disney then then spends a ton of money on theirs. And so, yes, we get great programming as, as fans, but as an actual business, you, you just can't spend unlimited budgets, right? So that was essentially a flawed strategy is, is sort of what one of the things they're going, right? Because they say lack of cost discipline and also said, which is interesting as well, you know, they were saying you're using the parks to subsidize your streaming losses. So it's very interesting because in, in terms of like, say when you're an investor or a shareholder, et cetera, you always say, okay, I'm gonna invest in Disney because they have you know multiple uh, uh, avenues of, of revenue and, you, and you're not worried if they're losing money in streaming because they're gonna make money in theme parks or they're gonna make money in cruises, these kind of thing. Um, however, the argument that Peltz would make, and this would be an argument that you could make against Amazon as well, is you would say, well, you know, each individual part of your company should be self-sufficient and self-profiting, right? Does that make sense? So like, for example, um, if you take a look at Amazon, when people say that they love Amazon, Amazon company, Amazon stock, they'll say, well, Amazon just kills it in cloud, right? They, they, their cloud business does awesome, you know, and they may take a loss at their um, at, at their delivery or they may not be so efficient with all the delivery drivers, et cetera, because it's not as profitable because it's more about volume, not necessarily margins, whereas cloud is margins. But they say, but when you put the two together, you have a successful company. So. Um, uh, Peltz would say opposite. He would just say, no, you need each individual part to be profitable. I think that's really interesting. So um, this is the other thing that they talk about as well. They say Disney had poor uh, capital allocation. So um, one is, again, it's it's the um, the mergers and acquisitions weren't so great. And also two, um, they increased the amount of leverage. Basically, they, they're borrowing more money uh, to you know make these sort of acquisitions. So it's interesting because Disney is going to claim that Peltz um, has no idea what he's doing, there's no idea what he's talking about, but it, literally it's right here on the website. You guys can look for this for yourself. So they're saying um, we want to fix corporate governance, uh, which is basically, you know, who's gonna, gonna be the, the line of succession. We also want to align compensation with uh, performance. So basically this is an interesting one. And actually there was an article recently as well regarding Apple and Tim Cook to where you start to tie uh, CEO pay with stock performance slash company performance, right? So essentially in, in the past, if you're just paying people whatever they want, um, it's not so really tied to stock performance, right? It, it certainly matters. So um, that's one. Uh, also too, they're saying you want to improve margins on their on their DTC, right? Direct to consumer. Um, they want to get rid of redundant costs and basically get rid of a lot of jobs. Um, and uh, also too, we talked about the last one, they want to um, enhance accountability, what they're saying, or reinstate the dividend by 2025. Um, and it counts accountability is in terms of like money spent and these kind of things. Now, there's been a lot of companies out there like this. Um, you can take a look at Goldman Sachs. We just talked about this a couple of days ago where they're like looking at people and say, hey, no more private jets, no more of that kind of stuff. As, as well as Disney was talking to their executives as well of like, hey, no corporate travel, no business travel, this kind of thing. So a lot of companies are gonna be cutting back. Uh, also too, you might see more of these sort of uh, proxy takeover kind of things. It's really interesting. And, um, you know, when you want to talk about the, say, the scammy YouTube world of like, they meet Kevin who just bought said jet, like literally all the big companies are like, yo, we got to cut back on expenses, Qu you know, quit doing those private jets because they're completely not worth it. And you have the, the basically scammy YouTuber guy, oh, no, no, I'm going to buy a private jet because I'm awesome. So <laughs> I want you guys to understand like how ridiculous it is that, that, that things that he's doing. So um, some of the other stuff that they're saying as well is, um, is uh, uh, they want to reduce the leveraging and um, there's another one that he was uh, also making the argument, this is in, in, uh, more in their presentation, which I'm not gonna show, like I said, I don't wanna break any laws or anything like that, but um, that he's trying to make the case that in the past, uh, he's brought you know uh, companies like a PNG or Unilever that had come back. But one of the things that I, I would say is it would be a criticism of Peltz is that, yes, he may be really good with like foods or, or, or drug distribution or sort of like that kind of big company, sort of like, I guess you wanna say like a company that sells widgets, you basically are, you know, moves a product, whereas, Disney is a theme park and a media company, so it's a different avenue. I think that would be a criticism against him. But 
um, I, I, I do think that, you know, main, uh, paying attention to the bottom line matters. Now, I completely understand, guys. I completely understand. For people who hate Disney and stuff like that, you're going to say, oh, go woke, go broke, blah, blah, blah. It's not really about that. It, it, it's not really about that. It's more like overspend, <laughs> borrow money to buy stuff that you don't need. That, that's what it really does. It's not necessarily go work, work, but I get it. If you hate Disney, that's what you're going to talk about. Um, the other thing too, what I think is a, is a, is a valid thing that Pelt says, um, the lack of uh, succession, I, I think that matters quite a bit. Um, also too, is, is you want to make sure re regarding Disney is that, you know, understand that during the pandemic, they struggled a lot with their theme park. So that's that's not all about governance, right? I mean, the pandemic hit and they had to basically close the parks and then what are you gonna do with all the staff? You, you guys get my point on this. So um, I, I don't know what how this is gonna end result. Um, I guess uh, Peltz has been offered a seat on the board, but not as a voting member, just as an observer member. So he's gonna, he's saying that, you know, Disney's respecting him in terms of like his opinion, but they just don't want him to vote. So uh, that's it. So anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this Disney thing. Um, I encourage you to look at the presentation for yourself if you're interested in business. I think it's a really fun thing to look at and we'll keep track. Is there a hostile takeover going on at Disney? Um, we will find out. So thanks again for watching and we'll track the story as we go. Uh, see you next time.